Uh, well, with markets down worse than 3%, 4% on the NASDAQ as the coronavirus worsens, we want to bring in Courtney Dominguez. She's a financial planner at Payne Capital. Um, Courtney, what correction needs to happen in the markets now to accurately price in the concerns that the coronavirus is going to be a global pandemic? I think that's what, exactly what you're seeing right now, is that fear getting priced in, because we haven't seen that yet. When the coronavirus first came out, we saw a pretty minimal decrease in the stock markets. And compared to most other pandemics that have happened in the past, we tend to see a bigger sell-off, and we haven't seen that until today. So I don't think it's necessarily a concern, but you're finally seeing that get priced into the markets. So how big of a pullback could this be? I mean, is this just the beginning? I would not be surprised if we see this, especially over the next like week or so, as we continue to get this data out, because markets are really just digesting. How far is this going to impact other countries? Is it going to affect the, um, the overall global economy right now? But I think really the question is going to become, how long of an impact is it? And right now, realistically, people are measuring this in a number of quarters, not years. And so the idea is it is going to be a short-term effect, because at some point in time, it's going to get con contained. And if it is transitory, as these things have been in the past, you need to use this as an opportunity. And when the markets dip, if anything, just you put your cash to work, because if it's a short-term event, it's an opportunity. So would you recommend that people buy stocks right now? I would. Very much so. Which I think sectors? just keep watching it over the next um, over the next couple of weeks here. Um, you really uh, specifically you want to look at your hardest hit sectors because there's going to be things that are getting hit so specifically with this virus. But as soon as the virus ends or we see an um, an end coming, that's going to get priced up pretty quickly. You can see a, this V formation; it can go up just as fast as it went down. So just take advantage with anything that's having that sharp drop. Right but that does to be seem to be the concern this time around, right? When we had SARS, it was yep. a V-shape. This time yep. it's turning out not to be the V-shape, which is what was originally expected because of the worsening of the situation. It's still unclear how this virus made its way to Italy, right? And, and thousands of cases right. that are expected to be unreported currently right now in that European country. Gold at a multi-year high. Should people be yep. taking risk off the table in certain areas of their portfolio? Well, I think this should just be a good reminder that you need to have the risk set up to your risk tolerance and to your goals. I mean, you need to have things in there like bonds and cash because let's say there's a dip, but there's another further dip a few weeks from now. We never know if and when that's going to happen. You want to have that dry powder, whether that's gold, whether that's bonds, something to be able to take advantage of it. So, yes, yeah, so while we are seeing a just um, so far the dip hasn't been too major, make sure you are set up properly to take advantage of these situations. Well, what advice would you have to someone specifically watching in their 20s or in their 30s right now who may be saying, wait a second, this is the, the worst move I've seen in a couple of years. Uh, maybe this person didn't actually, uh, wasn't actually uh, an adult during the Great Recession. This is the first sort of yeah. like indication that there could be some sort of down market on the horizon. Uh, what advice do you have for them to stomach through this? Um, to people in their 20s and 30s, what we tend to find is they have a lot in cash right now because we were very young and impressionable when 2008 happened and we're terrified of the stock markets. But realistically, we're long-term investors. We want this money to grow for us over the next 20, 30, 40 years. These are the perfect kind of opportunities because short-term, the markets can go down. Long-term, the markets have always recovered and gone higher, so you just need to take advantage of this. If you have cash on hand, which chances are, if you're in your 20s and your 30s, you probably do, just use this to your advantage. Just start to buy back in. as um, Do it in pieces. It doesn't have to be all overnight. Has the year-end target for the S&P 500 at Payne Capital Management, your firm, changed it all in the wake of this? We might see a slight impact, but no, I mean, we're, we're still optimistic when we're looking towards the year end. How does President Trump and his administration try to boost the stock market from here? We know the stock market crucial to the Trump administration. Yeah, then I think what you want to look at is how is the underlying economy doing? And the thought process right now is even with the coronavirus, yes, we might see some of our GDP get shaved off, but it's a pretty minimal impact that's being forecast right now. And we are still seeing growth. Um, that is what the Trump administration wants to tell is how well the economy is doing. Those fundamentals still look really good as of right now. What about rates in, in terms of interest rates right now? Does it change the way that investors should think about interest rates being lower this year? No, I would actually argue that it's it's maybe underappreciated. People are assuming that interest rates are going to get cut further, especially with the coronavirus. But if things get figured out and if inflation kicks in, if anything, I wouldn't be surprised to see that go higher. But right now, with interest rates being so low, it's only making stocks more attractive because, yes, we're seeing some volatility right now. We're actually getting pretty good dividend payouts in stocks in comparison to treasuries, which are under 1.5% for the 10-year right now. That's not a lot of interest you're getting while you're waiting. But what about international stocks, emerging markets, Europe, Asia? Does the view at your firm change at all on those particular areas? 
Not at all, especially if we're talking investors in your 20s and 30s, I think those have a really good long-term time horizon. And actually, especially like your developed markets are paying better dividends than the US right now. So you're actually getting paid better to wait in the short term. Other developed markets like in Europe? Yep, exactly. Okay, emerging markets, is this gonna be the year that emerging markets can finally recover with the stock market down so much? I'm, I'm we're actually very bullish on emerging markets, especially with things like the coronavirus hitting that more specifically. Take advantage of some of these these dips that you're seeing, but we do want to be diversified globally. I don't want to take two bets on any one specific industry. What about oil and natural resources and the, the, the concern around the de decrease in demand uh, because of the spread of the coronavirus, especially specifically with regard to China? We see uh, Brent crude and West Texas Intermediate taking a tumble today. Yeah. And again, I think we want to look at this a long-term view. These things are going to get hit harder with the coronavirus. Take advantage of those things. They're also another really high dividend paying industry. So again, you're getting paid in the short term. I think that's something that you really need to look at. But I do think it's important to remember, right, that there are still so many unknowns. We're not seeing Very the V-shape so. recovery. Companies that warned last week before even the worst hit yeah. said, we can't really give you a price in terms of how this is going to impact sales. We know it's negatively going to impact sales, but we yeah. can't say for certain because it's still playing out. Very much so, and you really have to weigh that out. But again, it's getting measured in a number of quarters right now, not years or decades. I think that's really what you want to focus on is it's still anticipated to be a short-term event. All right, Courtney Dominguez, financial planner at Payne Capital. Thanks, Courtney. Thanks for Thanks, having me. Courtney.